morning. Welcome to Undisputed. I'm Jenny Taft, and I am joined by Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. As always, good morning, guys. How we doing? Good morning. Good morning. How you doing today, Skip? Mm, how you doing? I'm doing well. Quite doing quite well. Really? I kind of like this look. Kind of look down with narrow. Oh, so you've gone permanently to no. No, not no, 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 no. Yeah, which means you're playing for tie <laughs> every topic every day, no. and you're going to lose anyway. No, no I'm back to tie yeah. tomorrow. Uh, it's Friday. All right. <laughs> Seriously, uh, apparently it worked for you yesterday, so you think, Shannon. Yes, uh, yes. Guys, we do have a lot to get to today, and I want to start the show by getting to the latest drama surrounding the Oklahoma State football program, because yesterday, Oklahoma State football coach Mike Gundy issued another apology for being photographed for wearing a One American News Network t-shirt. Gundy said he was sorry for all of the pain and discomfort that he caused. He also said that once he knew how the network criticized the Black Lives Matter movement, he felt disgusted. Shannon, should he lose his job? Skip, I'm not big into one in calling for people's job. Um, you are not and I never have been. Never have been, Skip. <clears throat> but I don't think the video did anything that says he should keep his job. Skip, how is an apology sincere if you read everything from a prepared statement? If you wrote everything down, so make sure I cross dot all my I's, cross all my T's to make sure I don't have any slip ups. How is that sincere? Apologies should be heartfelt. It should be from the heart. It should be just, I'm getting up here, guys. I come to you humbly. I'm sincerely, not I'm just reading. That's not how it works. That's scripted. Scripted can't be real. Yep. Come on, Mike Gundy. Now, here's the network that you said you just happened to be one night just flipping through the channels and you found it. Okay, you found Back it. Back in April. Go Back ahead. in April. Yep. You watch it. Mm -hmm. You know some of the things that they say on that show, on the news network. You know what they've been saying. Now, all of a sudden, you didn't know they've been critical of the Black Lives Matter movement. You don't know. To... Huh? Come on, Mike Gunn. Nobody believes that. And it's hard for me to believe the players that, if they were in attendance or was watching, believed anything that he had to say, Skip. Mm -hmm. It's just hard for me to believe that. For the simple fact he was reading a prepared statement. He didn't get up there off the cuff and say, guys, I'm sorry. I was wrong. There's some things. Skip, there's a list of things that he's been saying. He echoed President Trump's call it the Chinese virus. He's the one that says, bring the kids back so we can keep that money running through at Oklahoma. He did? Skip, he, uh, you remember he had his famous rant. That's when he kind of burst onto the scene. Criticize me. I'm, I'm a man. I'm 40. 2007. Yes. Directed at the female columnist of the Oklahoman. They talked about Jenny Cross. Yes. Whose column was right on the money, <laughs> and he condemned her in front of everybody. Yes. Skip, I believe what Mike Gundy has done, Skip, he's won just enough games to keep the state gamefully employed. Uh, he's had 14 of the 16 seasons. They were winning seasons, Skip. Yeah. He's won, you know, 10 games, six, seven times. Uh, he did, I think, what, 20, 2012, they won the Orange Bowl, they beat Stanford, Andrew Luck-led team. Fiesta. Fiesta Bowl, Fiesta Bowl. Beat, Fiesta Bowl. beat Fiesta. Andrew Luck. Yeah, yeah. In, a, in a BCS Bowl. Brandon game. Whedon. Yep. yep. So, uh, so I think he's done enough. Uh, do, is he ever really in contention for a national title? No. It's very hard. That, for that one year in 2011, Seven. they did get close. close. They got upset at Iowa close. State in the second-to-last game because right. they were undefeated. Yeah. That they wouldn't have probably won it, but they were in the thick of it. They were in the it. thick of it. Yes. And so, they, uh, so, in other words, for the last, like, seven or eight years, it's been hard for him to beat Oklahoma. To get... <laughs> two, two and 13 yeah. against Oklahoma. So, yes. to, to get to that yep. point. So, Skip, I did a little research. I got a call yesterday. I, I wanted to find out a little bit about Mike Gundy. Like I said, we're very close in age. And I think we left school up at the same time. I think he was 86 to 89. I was 86 to 89. And I got a text. And he said, man, I saw you guys talking about Mike Gundy. You might need to put a call into Alpha Williams. Now, I don't know if the guy, he went to Oklahoma State, but he wasn't there when this alleged incident took place. The, the, who, who texted you? Yeah, who okay. texted me. Right. He went to Oklahoma State, but not at the time that Gundy was there uh, and this incident allegedly happened. Did you know Alfred Williams? I did know. Okay. I don't know if he knew I knew Alfred. I played with Alfred, uh -huh. but we call him Plate. We call him Hot Plate Williams. Okay. Um, so uh, I called him. I say, uh, And Plate. he played at Colorado. He played at Colorado. <laughs> Got drafted in the first round by Cincinnati, mm -hmm. went to San Francisco. Mike Barton, when Mike came with us in 95, well, he came to us in 96. Mm -hmm. So he, I played with him from 96 to 99. I said, play, you know, we just started talking. He's like, boy, how you been? He has a radio show in Denver on, on air every day, KOA. And I said, well, play, tell me about an incident that supposedly happened in, um, in 89. I think it was 89. Mm -hmm. he, said, well, he said, well, Mike Gundy? I was like, yeah, how you know what I was talking about? He said, he called me an Indian. He said, we was whipping that you-know-what. 
They I, were. I had sacked him a couple of times. We, we were getting after him. It was 41 to 17. Yeah. Go ahead. And he said uh, we were getting after him, and I sacked him, and uh, he called me in. He said, I didn't say anything. He said, but during the half, I talked to his running, talked to the running back, and he said, you need to talk to him. Now, this was confirmed in, the, I think it was the Tulsa, the paper. Tulsa Can, World. Yep. We asked mm -hmm. Canavis McGee, Mike Jones. There were some, several other players. So they asked Alfred after the game, you know, Alfred, I think, 18, 19 years of age, and they asked him, you know, why was he so heated? And he just blurted out, Mike Gundy called me to end. Live. Ain't no, and he didn't say end. He actually said the word. Mike Gundy said, you know, they're trying to make me look bad. When they're beating you 41-17, they don't need to make you look any worse. And, Skip, there, there are some things that I've been honest, you know, growing up in rural South Georgia and played a lot of different teams that were, some were all white and some had a large uh, 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 makeup of white. I've never been called that. And if I had been called that, I probably would have reacted and I'd have said it. I don't, make, I don't make things up like that. But that's something that you don't make up, Skip. You don't put that, you don't put that shirt on someone if they don't say it. You don't do that. And so I said, play. Did that man say that to you? Skip, in the, in the black community, if somebody say, I put that on my kids, I put that on my mama, take it to the bank. Mm. I believe he said it. I don't believe Alfred would, I don't believe play, Alfred Williams would have made this up. I don't believe the other guys that said it. Canavis McGee was another guy that said it. Mike Gundy said it. Another linebacker said it. he stepped over the line. So why, why, would, why would they make this up? Why would they make this up? Mm -hmm. Now, the guy did reach out to me and says, look, I heard he said it. He said, but Shannon, I wasn't there. I don't know if he said it. He said that the person that was there, you should ask him. And I picked up the phone and I called him. We talked 30 minutes yesterday. And he said that absolutely 1,000% happened. Okay. Mike Gundy vehemently denied after the mm -hmm. game. He said it. His coach, Pat Jones, whom I know very well, said he doesn't have a racist bone in his body. So that's their side of the story. Right. But I'm going to lean to your side of the story because you know Plate. I do. Say. I know it very well. And, and when you're that explicit and that definitive, I, I'll take it to my bank also. Mm -hmm. And as you have always told me, if you're capable of saying that word one time, even back in your younger years, mm -hmm. you have that capability inside you that it, it could manifest itself again. Right. And you skip, and as you're young, as you get older, you understand you might still have certain feelings, but you know how to navigate it. Yeah. You wear certain things like the shirt, and you say certain things that doesn't say doesn't as as implicit as the N word, but we know how you try to navigate these waters because they're really shark infested now, yep. especially dealing with the times that we're in. Okay, so. That incident in and of itself is not a reason to fire him right here, no, right no, no, now, no, no, no. obviously, but mm -hmm. I appreciate you bringing that to mm -hmm. the discussion. Right. Now, for my bigger picture takeaway, and by the way, as I've told you many, many times, from my perspective, that word that you talked about, we're talking about the word that ends in the hard E-R, mm -hmm. that word. Right. It's the single most evil word in our language. Right. I've often said I wish it could be eradicated, made, be made illegal to say. Mm -hmm. But it's still said to this day, and it's very different from the word that the black community has. GGA. Yes, GGA, and, and drained the poison out of it, made it a term of endearment. So yes. let's not confuse the two. Correct. This is the word uttered by white men to. In a derogatory in, manner. In the the demeaning. utmost demeaning manner. Yes. Now back to the question at hand. I'm amazed that Mike Gundy still has his job at this moment. Mm -hmm. I thought it would have come down quickly for him to be removed because there have been many reasons to remove him. But to your point, he's won just enough games and he's just been, he's been just entertaining enough mm -hmm. with his mullet and all of his antics and, and crazy mm -hmm. quotations that they have hung on to him right. through thick and a whole lot of thin. Mm -hmm. But I am still stunned and disappointed in Chuba Hubbard and the black leaders of that team. And they do have talent on that team. And it's, it's all black talent. Mm -hmm. All of his best players are black players. Right. And I'm, I'm a little stunned and disappointed that they didn't band together and, and stand together and make this a bigger issue that something needs to change, such as his job. Yep. And I loved what Chuba said originally. Remember that original tweet was mm -hmm. just scathing when he said, 
I will not stand for this. This is completely insensitive to everything going on in society. Mm -hmm. Bingo. And it's unacceptable. I will not be doing anything with Oklahoma State until things capital change. Right. All caps. Correct. Right. The next thing I see, he's doing a video with Mike Gundy that afternoon in which they're standing together. But he did look uncomfortable, Skip. You he saw looked he was, very uncomfortable. You, that was, that was so did together. Mike Gundy, for that matter. Yeah, but That kind of seemed yeah. like he was put together by the AD, the school, the president or something. Because he was standing there with his arms folded like, uh, why am I up here? I just criticized no, no. you. You were absolutely wrong, but I got to stand up here. I got to be the good soldier and, and carry on. And it was almost surreal to watch this bizarro world in which Mike Gundy did not apologize for wearing that T-shirt. Right. And Chuba did apologize for tweeting about it instead of bringing it man-to-man, eye-to-eye to his head coach. Yes. And Chuba then did tweet later, my foot's still on the gas. I haven't backed off. But nothing has happened. There's been no action here. And the, the contingent of black leadership on that team has not stepped forward again to say, no, we're still not satisfied right. here. Correct. They had another clearing of the air with their coach yesterday. And maybe he said all the right things. Maybe he touched their hearts. Maybe he convinced them it's all going to be okay and I have seen the light. Was it more convincing than that red, that red statement? Because if it was no more than that, I, I, don't know know. How, I don't know how he convinced them. Skip, and in, in society, what we're going through right now, Skip, even the makers of Aunt Jemima, is changing yeah, the name. I, know. I Skip, got it. After 131 years, it took them 131 years to realize, Skip, that was a stereotype.